you. Darling, you are just never going to believe it. I mean, I had no idea. When I first talked to those people, you know, I mean, I thought it was just, you know, a simple little colonial. I mean, who knew? I'm still hyperventilating. You mean the son of Myers have money? We are talking M-O-N-E-Y. <laughs> to give you an example, their dog's name is Richard. <laughs> The servants call him Dick. <laughs> and I guess they must have liked me pretty good because when I left, they said that I could call him that too. Where is Julia? Oh, she's at the bank. So they liked your idea? I have no idea. I mean, I was completely intimidated. This was me in the Great Hall. I'm relieved. We got sugar bakers back. We got money coming in. And we will never go hungry again. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of hungry, let's celebrate. Yee-haw, I'll buy. I'll buy. I'll buy. Oh, come on. Oh, oh no, I think BJ ought to buy. Oh, Bernice and I can take care of ourselves. Just put a couple of daiquiris in the blender. <laughs> I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I don't think so. Oh, yes, I do. You're from America, aren't you? <laughs> uh, yes, I guess I am. A little arterial flow problem above the neck. Mother? <laughs> it's okay, Bernice knows. We don't pretend, do we, love? Ah, oh, hello, darling. <laughs> How are you, Bernice? Oh. <laughs> Bernice, this is Mary Jo Shively. She's a decorator, and isn't she cute? <laughs> oh, my, yes. We are just so honored that you could join us today. Isn't she cute? Oh, my, yes. <laughs> Hi, Perky. Oh, darling, here, let me give you a big hug. I didn't even see you over there. No, I was just waiting my turn. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Clifton, I'm Charlene Frazier. Uh-huh, very fine. <laughs> well... Red Butler from Charleston, where are you? The war is over. Show your face, my beloved. Scarlet, you're beautiful. So what else is new? I love you, Scarlet. It's 1865 and people will talk. I'm black and you're white. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Have I ever misled you? Yes, that time you told me going to a psychic's a waste of money, and they told me a bunch of things that came true. And also when you said people have tattoos have something wrong with them. I've known some very nice people. All right. <laughs> I hate it when you break my flow. Now, how much do you have invested in this business? <clears throat> well, half my savings. I mean, I could never give more than that, unless, of course, it was during wartime. I hope that didn't break your flow. <laughs> okay, you can come in now. Something's different. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> I, I like it. Really? It's okay. Well, that's the spirit. <laughs> what do you think? My heart is full. Look, Julia, I can't explain it. It was romantic fate. I'm a romantic. All I know is our eyes met. She's not only a romantic, she's a contortionist. <laughs> had a consultation at Ted's outer office. Oh, now it's Ted. Look, I just don't understand what everyone's getting so upset about. After all, Ted and Mary Jo are divorced now. Their relationship is in the past. Oh, come on, Suzanne. These things are never in the past. I'm sure Mary Jo has some old underwear she doesn't want anymore either. That doesn't mean she wants to see you in it. <laughs> well, I think we should let Mary Jo speak for herself. Mary Jo. I want the truth. If my going out with Ted would bother you in any way, then all you have to do is to tell me. And I would. <laughs> and if you want to go out with Ted, it's fine with me. 
Well, good, because I wouldn't want you to feel pressured or to feel threatened by our incredibly electric attraction for one another. And I swear I don't mean that bitchy. Patient in the universe, and here I come to find I got this toothless blob that just lies around all day. <laughs> you know, there's a word for you people that worry that competition is a bad thing. Losers. <laughs> Actually, there's another good word, wusses. As a matter of fact, you know, there's just a whole lot of good words, and I used to yell all of them out of car windows, after beauty patterns when I drive by the girls I'd just beaten. <laughs> Well, I don't have time for this now. I gotta go to the Cadillac dealership and get my windshield replaced. You come with me, okay? What? Why, why do I have to go? Because, Charlene, I have to convince them that it was broken when I bought it, and I just didn't notice it until now. <laughs> and you have to come with me in case they doubt my honesty, so come on. Suzanne, no, on. this isn't gonna work. Suzanne, no, I am not gonna do this. Okay, so you resent me. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that now. I mean, I've offered you money, you won't accept it. Ken, I don't want your money, and I don't want your degree. Then what do you want? I want... I want to know that what I did mattered. That I mattered. I want you to say... Thank you. That's it? Gee, you're putting a lot of pressure on me to perform here. <laughs> I, I mean, if that's all you want, I want to say it with tremendous feeling, but now I'm feeling all blocked. And... You know, Ted, you really are a jackass. <laughs> Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Is that him? Yep. Checking up on you, huh? You know, at first I thought that might be an emergency about the kids, and then I was thinking how you'd know exactly what to do. You always did. See, that's the trouble with these young girls. They don't know anything. I used to love how you could mix a good martini and give a great massage and keep everything in order, like color-coding my shirts and socks, filing all the receipts in my wallet. Those are things a man comes to appreciate as he gets older. Ted, before you go any further, I just want to say something. You keep telling me that you've changed. I've changed, too. When I hear you talk about us, all I hear is what I can do for you. That phone call just now, that was from a man who worries about me. Worries about things like if my tires are all right or what to get me for my birthday. When he's out of town, I know that I can call his room night or day, and I won't have to hear 14 laughing bimbos in the background. You know what? I like that. I think I deserve it. And I just realized that I wouldn't jeopardize that for anything in the world. But I sure do appreciate the offer. The offer? Of you and me getting back together. You mean you thought that I wanted a, a, a reconciliation? Isn't that what you've been talking about? No, I... I was just glad to see you again. I want us to be closer. And all that stuff about Tammy? Pre-wedding jitters. <laughs> Fooey. <laughs> what? I said fooey. It's a new word at our house. So, if you didn't want to reconcile, what? was the big question you wanted to ask me. Big question? Oh, ha, huh. I just wanted to know if it'd be okay for Claudia and Quint to be in the wedding. Sure. Of course. You're their father. They love you. As a matter of fact, on some level, we all love you. 
just want you both to know that you can count on me. Last year, when Hayden died, I said, I'm going to do what I always wanted to do, start my own decorating business. And no matter how many overwrought, tight-fisted bankers wail and gnash their teeth, I have no intention of going under. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with me, BJ. Ladies, as of right now, you are all fired. Pleasure doing business with you. Oh, brother, I can't believe this. No more sugar bakers. Oh. I feel like I'm dreaming. Oh, Julia. After all these years, such bad news, and such a good hair day. <laughs> hey, ladies, how's it going? Where's Julia and Mary Jo? With the client. Anthony, where have you been? I've been trying to page you in the truck. We got all sorts of people screaming to have stuff delivered by Thanksgiving. Didn't your beeper go off? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, it did, Charlene. I was at a stoplight parked next to a guy in a Mercedes convertible talking on a car phone. So I asked him if I could borrow it. <laughs> he said, if it was all right with me, he would rather that I didn't. <laughs> Can you believe those guys? I mean, who do they think they're fooling? They're not talking about nothing on those phones. They're saying stuff like, uh, yeah, Phil, would you go into my office immediately and staple everything on my desk together? <laughs> I just want to know if you delivered those drapes to Tommy Thompson. Well, of course I did. Do I look like somebody who is not responsible? Well, he called and you weren't there yet. I don't even want to hear this. I mean, I don't even like going out to the dude's house. I am trying to hang the drapes, and he keeps coming in every five minutes with his friend. Look at him, Richard. Doesn't he have the strongest shoulders you've ever seen? <laughs> and then, when I'm leaving, he starts following me, saying, Anthony, are you sure you can't stay for a cocktail? <laughs> don't cocktail me. This is not my first time in Dodge. <laughs> the Yankees is coming! The Yankees is coming! Oh, heavens! The Yankees! How do I look? They have the heads close! They have the heads close! Oh, oh! How can this be? Yankees? I didn't even know we had a heads post! What is a head post? I'm scared. I'm scared, I tell you. Who will protect us now? Who? 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 How do you know? How do you know? There's something, Red. Oh, they're coming up the steps. They're coming up the stairs. Captain Butler, we're counting on you. Now. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Day's here. Whoa, look at the time. <laughs> I forgot all about my poker game. Damn, this gambling habit. I'll be back. All the men are gone. Who is going to save us now? Miss Scotty? It's been fine working for you. Don't worry about me, I'm gonna catch a bus. <laughs>